Huntsman V2 Analog is Razer's premier offering and comes in at a truly unbelievable $250. Like seriously, what is wrong with you? As every key has Razer's optical mechanical switches with adjustable actuation between 1.5mm and 3.6mm, giving you the ability to have full analog joystick and trigger control in supported games, along with the ability to have two functions in a single key press. Actuation force varies the deeper you go between 55 to 75 grams, and dang, do they sound amazing. It also comes with everything you'd come to expect from a premium keyboard, including underglow lighting, chroma RGB, a padded magnetic RGB wrist rest, dedicated media keys, multifunctional volume wheel, USB 3.0, yeah, 3.0, pass-through, PBT double-shot keycaps, fully programmable keys, on-the-fly macro recording, in-key rollover with anti-ghosting, game mode, 1000 hertz polling, and an aluminum top plate. Whew, I almost ran out of breath there. Starting off with the analog switches, the first thing I noticed is how heavy the actuation force is. They don't mention it anywhere on the spec sheet, but from people who have the tools to effectively measure, it starts at around 55 grams, and then as you get close closer to bottoming out, it gets closer to 75 grams, which took me some getting used to, as most other linear switches are around 45 grams, which at first kind of turned me off. But then the more I use the keyboard, the more I came to appreciate the increased resistance. As it makes my key presses more intentional and deliberate, increasing my accuracy for both typing and gaming at the cost of a little less speed. But I noticed about once or twice a day that key presses wouldn't be registered, even though I thought I'd press it enough. The joystick and trigger control works by having variable actuation which can be between 1.5 millimeters and 3.6 millimeters. As the linear optical switches work by refracting light, depending on how much or how little light reaches the sensor, it tells the keyboard slash game where the switch is and how much movement to apply. For this to work correctly, the game needs to support controller and mouse at the same time, which only a few games support, which is a real shame as when it works, it is awesome and gives me close to the same control as controller sending my granular movement through the roof. But there are still two problems with this. The first is that these switches don't actuate immediately and need to be moved around one millimeter before they start to actuate. They should make it so they actuate around 0.3 millimeters, giving you the complete 3.6 millimeters of movement. Which leads to the second point, that a normal controller for both joystick and trigger gives you two to three times more movement, where this gives you about two millimeters. It has been proven that the larger the surface area you have, the more accurate your movement is, which is why analog stick extenders are so popular especially since moving something two millimeters with accuracy requires a lot of focus and dexterity, making it difficult. The variable actuation force helps with this, but can also make it more difficult, leaving me on the fence on which is best, consistent or variable actuation force. I think most people will not have the patience to utilize these to their full potential and just go back to traditional keys where they are either activated or not, since a lot of games don't support it. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so I can bring you more content like this. It worked great on Grand Theft Auto V. On Apex Legends, it would make my aim jittery in Horizon Zero Dawn. It halfway worked as it supports controller, but not controller and mouse at the same time. It wasn't supported at all in Escape from Tarkov, which is no surprise. So, as I mentioned, even if you do have the dexterity, finding a game that supports it is difficult. But when you do, magic happens, and the control over your character is dramatically improved. Even if you remove the analog control, you still have two key presses in a single stroke, such as walk and run or equip and throw a grenade in one key press which works on any game which is only limited by your imagination and can be extremely powerful if utilized correctly. You can also adjust the actuation point to be different in every single key, meaning if you find yourself accidentally pressing a button when gaming, you could make it require more travel distance to actuate. Moving away from gaming, this keyboard is fantastic for typing, even though it's linear. They are the best linear switches I've tried outside of the Corsair optical switches as they are very smooth and responsive. And that sound Oh, that sound is sublime. But of course that comes down to personal preference and I do find that they are very loud. I don't notice any pinging. Here's a quick test.
In the end, if you are a fan of linear switches, I don't understand why you wouldn't buy a keyboard that supports variable actuation. In fact, I don't even understand why normal linear switches even exist at this point, as they should now be obsolete. If that were to happen, I'm sure more games would support dual inputs, and you would really see analog keyboards start becoming the norm, especially in competitive games. But as we currently stand, the analog nature of these switches is extremely limited, and due to the cost of this board, it will not make it worth it for the switches alone. As for the rest of the keyboard, not much has really changed from the original Huntsman Elite, except the wrist rest is more padded and now comes with a USB 3.0 pass report, which is unique. Well, not the pass report itself, but it being 3.0. Due to this addition, you don't get a removable cord, which I hate, as it is a poor trade for me as I like to swap my keyboards depending on my mood. Instead, it splits into two thinner wires, which I do like, making them more malleable, but arguably more cumbersome. The first cord ends in a USB-C, which is completely wild, and the only keyboard that I'm aware of, especially from a main brand, that has gone this way. But if you're like me, you'll just use the included USB-C to USB-A adapter to hook it up to your system. The second cord for the past report is the traditional USB-A. They also mentioned that both ports need to be 3.0 ports. The reason for the past report is obvious, but the reason for the main one is to be able to effectively power everything with the correct speeds, as you've got RGB lighting, underglow lighting, optical switches that use light that are adjustable along with the other features. If you plug it into a 2.0 port, you will run into stutters and problems. With the pass-through port being on the left side, it makes it easy and convenient to plug things in. The padded wrist rest is a lot nicer as it feels like it has better or more padding along with going to the very edges. It continues to be magnetic and has RGB underglow lighting around it which makes it stand out when you are walking up to your desk or leaning back, while shining a bit on your desk as well, which adds a nice little touch. You'll also probably want to use it because this keyboard sits quite high, making you break your wrists without it. Speaking of RGB lighting, Chroma RGB continues to be the best I've ever seen. This keyboard also uses underglow lighting around the keyboard, which is unique, and I love it. But gone is the top underglow lighting, probably to ensure that there is enough power from the single USB-C port, as previously you needed both ports plugged in to provide enough power. I like it because it also spills onto the desk a bit. These have the same Razer PBT keycaps that come on all of their boards with the same problems, meaning they are slightly bumpy for traction, which I like, have attractive thin font, which I also like, but at the cost of brightness, making it almost look lackluster, which I don't like. I'd recommend switching them out for something else as it really transforms this board, giving it the wow fact. This should be easy as it supports a standard bottom row. I still find it ridiculous though that you can't store onboard lighting profiles without Razer Synapse open. Additionally, previously made profiles will not auto assign to the keyboard, making you go through and set them manually, which is cumbersome and tedious. But hey, you get cloud saves, which are kind of pointless. But anyways, it does come with dedicated media keys and volume wheel, which I love. They took some of the user complaints into account here as they feel a lot better as they require moderate slash severe actuation force, have mild pre slash post travel and strong spring back force, making them feel very crisp and satisfying. The media keys don't wobble, but the mute button still does. They are also very loud, especially, especially that mute button. They continue to be awkward looking with lighting around the button instead of down the center. There is no stop button, and when you adjust the RGB, it's all the same color. The volume wheel continues to be bumpy when scrolling, but continues to be multifunctional, meaning up can be something different than down, which is adjusted in Razer Synapse 3 and can be saved to one of the five onboard profiles. The center of the volume wheel is used for mute slash unmute, but for the cost of this board, I really wanted a better experience. With every key on this keyboard being programmable, you can also make these keys whatever you want, including Mac keys if you like. I like Razer's on the fly macro recording as it is simple and straightforward. You press the function F9 to start and then the keys you want followed by the function F9 to stop and then whatever key you want it to be binded to. It does require synapse to be open and there are no dedicated macro keys. Again, for the cost of this board, that can be disappointing, but I'd rather not have them as it just makes the keyboard even larger. It's better to use the Razer's HyperShift function, which you access by pressing the function key, which then allows you to have 104 macro keys. Build quality is excellent. This guy looks and feels premium. It has an aluminum top plate that you can't actually tell is aluminum as the keyboard is so minimal that you barely even notice it is there. I would have loved to see them use a brush design over a flat design, making it pop more and look more premium. It is also quite hefty and we perceive things that are heavier as being higher quality, whether that be true or not. One thing I really don't like is that this keyboard is thick, like really thick, 
which is not what I like my keyboards being, but is at a natural slight decline, which does help a little bit. It does have horizontal step ups, which can further help, but they are so-so. They get the job done, but aren't the strongest. It also comes with large rubber pads, keeping it in place but no cable route. Again, for the price, I was hoping the step ups to be better. This keyboard comes with 1000 Hertz polling rate where most of the other Huntsman V2 line comes with 8000 Hertz polling, but not key scanning. You're not missing a whole lot by it being at 1000 Hertz and plenty would say that that is already overkill. I would have preferred to see at least 8000 Hertz polling and ideally 4000 Hertz key scanning as I notice a bit of difference like 144 Hertz compared to 240 Hertz on monitors when using a 4000 Hertz key scanning and 8000 hertz keyboard. Regardless, this keyboard is on the slower side if ratings is to be trusted, as this has a delay of 2.7 milliseconds compared to 0.5 milliseconds, or if we are going by Corsair's marketing, 0.25 milliseconds, which I think I can feel, but plenty will disagree with me on that. So for me, I'll continue to use my Corsair K100 for normal gaming and this for games that support analog. Moving on to the conclusion, it looks like I was correct by thinking that the analog switches are currently pointless in today's market as very few games effectively support them and with the minimal movement it requires high dexterity to take full advantage of them. Even then, they are not as effective as a traditional controller, but with that said, I don't understand why non-adjustable linear switches even exist, as they are completely pointless when you have something like this and really need to be retired so they can become the norm, which would then motivate gaming studios to support them, allowing keyboard players have dramatically better finite control, allowing us to get some of that lost movement back. As when this works, it is absolutely amazing, allowing me to have nearly the same movement as controller along with dramatically better aim that a mouse provides. In other words, allowing me to have my cake and eat it too. They also sound and feel incredible, meaning if you like linear switches, I recommend this keyboard even if you don't use the analog nature of it. As outside of the switches, you are still getting a premium board with bright chroma lighting, a very comfortable magnetic rick, rick, bleh, a very comfortable magnetic wrist rest with underglow lighting, optical switches that are fully programmable, a USB 3.0 pass through port, dedicated media keys in key rollover with anti-ghosting, good on the fly macro support, and solid but not great PBT keycaps. But some of the cons, that it's not 8000 hertz, it has a higher delay than I'm used to at this price point, the dedicated media keys are kinda hideous, you can't store lighting profiles on onboard memory, it comes with an attached cable that can be cumbersome, but on the bright side is then making it blend in better, it has no macro keys, and you really need to keep Synapse 3.0 open to get all the features. Synapse 3.0 is also not user friendly, and a lot of the features are not intuitive or where you would think they would be. Also, I still find this keyboard to be at least $50 too expensive, should be closer to the $200 mark, with sales dropping in into the $170 range. If you liked what you saw, consider liking and subscribing. Also, I recommend checking out my Corsair K100 review before buying this guy, as I think it is a superior board if you eliminate the analog nature of this guy. Or any of my other keyboard reviews if you're looking for something different. I will see you and your beautiful face on the next one. God bless and peace out.